Welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. <laughs> So a couple of weeks ago, I told you Vivor sent me something and they did, they sent me a very nice vacuum sealer. And so yesterday, if you saw the video on Saturday, which today is Sunday, uh, we harvested some things. And so we're gonna go ahead and preserve them. I have so many beans right now um, in the freezer. And so they're just in Ziploc bags. I think that it is time for me to start preserving them a little um, better where they will last a little longer because I have so many. And we all saw my canning video. I'm definitely gonna try it again, but I don't feel like trying it today. So I am going to blanch the green beans and I have some in the refrigerator too. So that's what I have right now. But I'm gonna blanch the green beans, I'm gonna flash freeze them, and then I'm gonna vacuum seal them because they should last longer vacuum sealed and frozen. So now the other thing we're gonna do is we have a whole bunch of peppers. Um, a lot of these are the habanadas, which I absolutely thought they were delicious. I've never tried to freeze these, but I'm gonna try vacuum sealing them and freezing them. Um, I'm gonna take the little stem part off. I'm gonna wash them really good. And then I'm just gonna freeze them right from the state that they're in. Since I've already done some canning and I know that we're not gonna eat a whole bunch of canned jalapenos. Um, and so once you open them, of course, you know, you gotta put them in the refrigerator and then use them. So I'm gonna try this freezing method. And then this year, during the winter, I'll let you know what that looks like. Well, how it turned out. <laughs> That did a great seal. Y'all see how tight that is? Oh, that's awesome. I probably could have cut the bag a little bit smaller, but wow. Okay, Vivor. And y'all know I already got a vacuum sealer, but um, it don't seal like this. We're gonna talk about this one. Like, we're gonna talk about the specs on this, cause wow, that's very much surprising to me. Huh, okay. Let's, let's get the rest of them done. <laughs>
Okay, so y'all, that was exciting to me. Like I said, I have another vacuum sealer and I'm assuming it's not as powerful. This is the VS5425. It is a commercial grade vacuum sealer. Like when I say this food is tightly sealed, it is tightly sealed. I am very excited. So I did full peppers. This is basil. So I put my herbs in, in jars, but I'm starting to run out of space. Like the jars are stacked on top of each other, but I don't want to not preserve my uh, herbs. But look how tightly those are preserved. Like there is no air getting into this bag. So this is what I plan to do with most of the oregano. If you remember in my last video, I said I wasn't going to show you this because I, I didn't have time to get the oregano. Well, no, I didn't want to kill the spiders. <laughs> I didn't want to knock their webs down, so we didn't get it. Um, but I had basil drying. I have, uh, what, lemon balm drying right now. And so when I am running out of space in the in the cabinet, I'll do this. I mean, like I said, we have a whole bunch of green beans in the freezer already, and they're in Ziploc bags. And I'll say also, this is going to save space in my freezer, too. Oh, I like that I was able to cut the top of this bag and still make another bag out of it so it's not wasteful either like how cool is that and the seal is is very good like even the seal that you make yourself to make a new bag is is really good um and yeah like i said i made these bags pretty sure these were bags that i made by cutting because it comes with three different size bags so you have this size bag not sure exactly what size it is <laughs> nice size rolls too and then you got this size so it's wider and then these already come cut for you um, and already in bags but like that's one of these that I cut but let me show you the size look at that nice size bags you can preserve nice size things in here I can't wait until we get some more quail because this is going to be a very nice seal for meat. Um, I didn't have any meat today, but like if you find meat at a good price and um, you want to buy a good amount of it, like that's how I do my steaks. I, when I find my steaks, I buy them at a good price. So like if they're on sale for $6.99 a pound and you get a pound pack, that's $6.99. And I normally get two steaks. So somebody had said like I was rich on my steak uh, picture. I am not. <laughs> I shop when things are on sale. Um, it also comes with a manual, but y'all know me. I did not hardly even use it because <laughs> I don't do it. But, but there are really good instructions in it. I will not say that they are. The instructions are really good um, in this book. So it does come with a manual that you can use if, if you're a manual type of person. <laughs> and it came with another uh, seal. So I guess once the seal in the inside goes bad, you can replace it um yeah oh and the little piece that goes over top of the heating part so yeah i think this is great like i'm not even joking i had no problem using this so it's gonna be a link down in the description below if you are interested in looking up this product or any of vivor's products for that matter i have not got a product from them that i did not like so just like even if you're not interested in this go check out their website um and there is a discount code i believe it's like five percent off and you can use it site-wide it does not have to be for this vacuum sealer but i hope y'all enjoyed that we're gonna go outside because we have lots of things to do in the garden but don't let me forget thank you vivor for sponsoring this video you know what i was putting this stuff away those beans that's in the freezer already in ziploc bags I'm just gonna, they're already frozen and, and I flash froze them so they're not sticking together. I am going to go ahead and do, I'm gonna vacuum seal them too. It, I am sure will save space in my freezer. So yeah, I'm gonna do that, y'all. Check, check it out. <laughs> So we got the Vivor water uh, collection barrel 
set back up. I'm going to go need to get some of the shorter ones that go on the outside because this reaches out a little bit further. So they have shorter ones that will fit right here and on this side. And so I'm going to go and get those. I'm not going to go get those today because we have a lot of work to do today. Um, I, I take that back. I'm not going to go get them while we're on this video, while I'm recording this, but I will go and get them today. Um, we don't have any rain in the forecast, but the next time it rains, I want this barrel to, to stay standing up. A few people have asked how I liked it. Um, it was working fine until we got a lot of rain and it was not level. So if you choose to get one, wherever you put it, it needs to be level um, because it will fall over once it starts to fill up more. But it was working. Just an update on that. Um, so listen, we got a lot to do today. I got to go take this wetsuit off. It was like 60 some degrees this morning when I originally got up. Um, my son is sick. <laughs> and so that's why I was bringing in the compost and stuff. And he was like, I could still get it. And I was like, well, no, you have a fever, so you should not be getting it. So I got that out here today. I picked it up yesterday when I was out and about. I took yesterday off to get my life together, to try to get my life together. Um, there's a leaf in my hair. I'm also going to put this up. So what are we going to do? We're going to get these beds fork through. I did not buy a new fork. So when I say forked, probably going to be using a little fork in my hand <laughs> to get those beds cleared, um, get the compost put in it. Oh, I did pick up my seedlings uh, yesterday, my starts from the local feed and seed store. So I got pretty much everything I wanted. There's kohlrabi in there, there's kale, there's collards, there's cabbage, broccoli in there. So this whole flat was $20. That's how they sell it. They're $2.00 per and there's four in each some of them have extras so um twenty dollars for the flat two dollars for that one not too bad I, I feel like i spend that much growing them in energy water my time <laughs> so i'm not upset about that but today we are going to get in here we're going to pull out so listen i did a post yesterday about all the hornworms that's on these tomatoes have not seen a hornworm all year long but they are everywhere so we're gonna feed the hornworms to the chickens. There are a few tomatoes on here, so I may leave it and just let them uh, go ahead and ripen. But let me show you all these hornworms on this tomato. On these tomatoes. Look, y'all. He is having a ball. Let's see if we can, look at him. He is having a ball on my tomato. It's another one right there, having a ball on my tomato. Another one right there having a ball on my tomato two two and one <laughs> right there having a ball on the tomatoes there go another one he's huge look how big he is i mean big over here <laughs> having a ball that's their poop so if you're seeing that on your tomato plants you need to go look for them because they can kill a whole tomato plant like look right here they ate all of those leaves <laughs> So it's just about fall time anyway. So we're not gonna let us let that get us down. We are going to pull those tomatoes probably, at least the ones that don't have a lot of tomatoes, we're gonna pull those. We're gonna feed those hornworms to the chickens. They'll give them a nice little snack. Um, I'm still thinking about, I, I, I'm probably going to go ahead and pull these cucumbers. There's a lot of cucumbers on them, but they are huge. So that's like, look at this one down here. Hold on, where is it? huge I could let it continue to grow until it turned yellow to save the seeds um I don't know I might I might not I'm also thinking that we're gonna move the peppers over into a more shaded spot because they are drying out so fast and with life being what it is right now um, at work so I'm thinking I may move them to a more shaded spot um, and not in the walkway and then maybe move the potatoes into the walkway so they can get a little more sun. So I don't know, we got a lot to do today. We're gonna get as much done as we can. It is my birthday month. My birthday is on the 22nd. I'm turning 40, so that's a milestone birthday. Um, and we're doing like a countdown to 40 for me. So this evening we're doing a girls night. Um, and so I'm trying to get this done early so that I could prepare, get packed and stuff because we are staying overnight. Um, but yeah. We got a lot to do. I'm thinking I need to cut the fruit trees. And I know it is summertime and people don't cut fruit trees. 
I do. It's been working. So we're going to probably cut the fruit trees today. Um, I am on the fence about this bed because it's still looking so good. But that's the thing when you're trying to get prepared for fall. Um, I don't know if I want to pull this stuff or not. I I'm just not sure. I it's doing so well. <laughs> Look at these green peppers. Look, y'all. It's still doing so well. And the basil beside it is still doing well. And the marigold is huge and taking over. So, so I haven't decided if I'm going to pull that or not. Um, so let's see. I don't even know where to start. I do know where to start. I need to go take this wetsuit off. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so we changed the shirt, grabbed our stool and some tools. This is my home and garden trend stool. Love this stool. It's a kneeler and you can sit on it. Um, there's always a link down below for this stool if you're interested in it. <laughs> Listen, y'all, the loofah. The loofah keep trying to take me out every time I walk through there. Um, but yeah, there's always a link. Um, I think it's for 20% off of this stool. I love it. It has a little place for me to hold my tools. Like I said, it's very lightweight. You can move it. It also folds up. Um, I don't always fold it up, but I do like this stool. Um, but I, so I left the sweatpants on because like I said uh, in a few other vlogs, the uh, mosquitoes, they've been pretty bad in the last few in the last few uh, weeks. I don't know why. Uh, so I left the sweatpants on, put on a t-shirt, and I'm fine with that. Um, so we're going to start with these beds. I am going to rake through them, which I left my rake. Let me go grab that. So I'm just going to use this rake to go through it. The bed that we're going to work on first, um, the before <laughs> the fork broke, um, I had already kind of rolled through it, but I didn't do the front section of it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to rake through it, try to get out all the roots that I can get out. Someone said I need gloves. You are not wrong. Thing is, I don't like using gloves. So um, unless like I just got my nails done, I don't really use gloves. But you were right. I should be using gloves. <laughs> but what I was saying is I'm going to rake through it, um, pull out the roots that I can get. I'm just going to do it like this. This is my easiest option because I did not grab another rake. I could also probably get the shovel and kind of shovel through it. I may do that too. But basically I just want to break up the roots and any really big root systems, I, I want to take them out. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to do to move this soil around. Again, a fork would be much better, much easier, much quicker, but it broke. And then after that, I'm going to put some uh, granulated fertilizer in it. I use, hmm, I have to tell you in a little bit what I use. I don't, I don't remember the name at this very moment. Um, I'm going to put some granulated fertilizer in it. I'm going to water the bed really well. And then I'm going to put some compost on the top, just a small layer of compost on the top. I picked up some black cow compost from Lowe's, which is, you know, it's a good compost. I use it a lot. I don't use it alone, especially in my beds because, I mean, in my bags because I, I noticed, and maybe it's my zone, I don't know, because I watch Hollis and Nancy, I think that's their name, and they fill their bags with black cow and they don't seem to have a problem, but in my area, it, it turned into a brick. So I don't use it solely by itself in my bags, but it's a good compost that I put onto the top of uh, the soil. Oh, look at that uh, onion that didn't make it. It was in the soil still. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to put you in time lapse real quick and then I'll show you how I'm amending the beds for fall. I am not putting my starts in today. So we are in the lower temps right now, but we're supposed to be back in the 90s tomorrow. I am going to let them harden off over there or maybe even like closer to the the fence to let them harden off but I'm not going to put them in today for one I would like the stuff like the compost and the granulated fertilizer to start breaking down um, before I put them in here and it, it is just going to be hot so so we're not doing that today but we are going to amend these beds today we're going to pull stuff today um, yeah we're getting ready for fall <laughs> Thank you. 
So somebody asked me to make more series. Perfect timing. <laughs> Y'all, I got this bed done. At this point, the shovel goes right down, pulls the dirt right back up, but it is hot. And these beds are in the sun. So we are not gonna finish that today. I did finish that one. We are gonna go ahead and amend it. I'm gonna show you how I amend it. I'm trying to stand in the shade up under this bean trellis. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and amend it um, with some with some compost, some granulated fertilizer. We're gonna get those hornworms off them tomato plants, and I'm gonna see y'all later. <laughs> so this will be part one of I think I'm gonna call it um, when fall comes. So I'm starting a new series, when fall comes, and you're just gonna see how I prepare for fall. Um, I think it is ocha. It's 1046 and it is already hot out here. Let me see what the temperature is. So it's saying 74. It should still be cool out here, but I guess I'm in the sun. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I fertilize the bed. We are going to put the compost down. We're going to water it really good. And then I'm going to say, then I'm going to say goodbye. By the way, that's one big pile of root and the inside of my boot. <laughs> one big pile of root right there, one more big pile of root right there. So, and apparently some plastic. So, listen, take it from me, learn from me. If you grow 365 days a year, do not cut your plants at the root. If you go back to some of my other videos, I will tell you, cut your plants at the root, that's how they decay, da 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 da. It is true. But if you grow 365 days a year and your garden never gets to rest, that's what you're looking forward to. So dear God, don't do it. I'm so hot and I just knew I was gonna get all of this done today and get all of these beds amended. That, that ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, y'all. All right, so the granulated fertilizer that I use is called Garden Tone. It's an organic fertilizer. And I'm just going to throw it out into the bed and then I'm gonna put some compost on there. We're gonna water it and we're gonna be done. And that's all I do to, um, to you know, like amend the beds to get ready for the next season. I do it at every season. And now I know I also need to, I need, also need to dig my plants out. I do not need to cut them at the root. I just use my stool to do full reads while I also sit down and water. I love this stool, I really do. Okay, so this soil was really dry, so you can see where there's water like pooling. Um, I'm gonna let this kind of soak in and then I will come back and I will water again. It's also a hot part of the day. You can see from the sun and all this sweat on me <laughs> um, that it's a hot part of the day, which is odd because it's 11 something, like right at 11. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm gonna let that soak in. I'm gonna water it again and then tonight, well, not tonight because I won't be here, but um, in the morning, Sunday, when I get back, or when, listen, whenever I get back, I will water it again at a cool part of the day, so late in the evening, but I will keep it moist so that the things that I put in today can start to break down. The granulated fertilizer breaks down when it's touching the soil and the soil is moist. Um, and so we wanna let that break down before we plant. I completely forgot about them hornworms that we have got to get off these tomatoes, at least the ones I'm gonna try to let um, ripen. So let's get them. I do have on a glove. I'm not touching them with my hands. Uh, Ooh, listen, it's so gross. It's, oh my goodness. And they hold on. Like I could take the whole leaf like that. Look at it. I think they're pretty, but also gross. That's odd. All right, taking it to the chickens and there'll be more. So, I gotta go, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost 
every day. Bye, y'all.